are your ways, great are your works. Great are mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 19, in verse 14 and 15, I'm going to read you a couple of verses. You can read Hezekiah's prayer here. You can read Isaiah's prophecy. But each one of us this morning, there are times when we need to get in the down on our face before God and do what Hezekiah did. He got some bad news about uh, the king uh, of, the, of the Syrians. He knew that he, they were claiming a property and, and claiming nations. Then he gets a letter from uh, the king of e Egypt. And the king of Egypt says uh, your God is nothing and your God is uh, worthless and he just goes in a whole this le whole letter of that we're going to conquer and you think your God is something when he is nothing but in 2nd Kings chapter 19 and verse 14 it says and Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and this is the key to all of our problems and all of our situations. Whatever letter that is handed us, we need to take it to the house of the Lord like Hezekiah did. And he took that letter and he spread it before the Lord. In verse 15, it says, then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, the one, oh hallelujah, the one who dwells between this cherubim, you are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Verse 16, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear the words of Sinashabel, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Things that happen to us is not sometimes our, can be our own making, but sometimes they are an approach, an attack, we feel like an attack upon us. A personal attack. But some these sometimes these attacks are not personal. They are spiritual. And it's not about us. It's about attacking our God. Whose report are we going to believe? Is our God deaf? Is our God hard of hearing? Is he incompetent? Is he dead? No, I won't believe that report. I will take that report. I will spread it before the altar of the Lord. And I say, and tell him, Lord, you see this report. You hear what they're saying. Now it's time you deliver your child. In the name of Jesus. Lord, that you will confirm your word in our hearts today. Lord, the enemy has come to attack and stand against us. But Lord, we are going to stand against him. We are going to stand and fight the good fight of faith. Lord, you are our captain. You are our general. You are fighting our battles, and we're not fighting alone. And Lord, we're giving you the battle. Lord, you win the victory for us in Jesus' name name. Everyone said in Jesus' name. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just clap our hands unto the Lord this morning. Hezekiah was king of Judah. The Jewish writings say that he was one of Judah's best kings. His father was uh, Ahaz. His father was one of Judah's worst kings. He was one of the most wicked kings. He was one of the most ineffective kings. When Ahaz finally died, uh, Hezekiah inherited the spiritual, the economic, and the political legacy that was left to him by his father. The nation was in debt. The people were a broken spirit. The country was in danger of being enslaved permanently to the Assyrians. And to make matters worse, Hezekiah was only 25 years old when he took the throne. But I tell you what, saints, this morning, he had three things going for him. His age may have been against him. He may not have the, the, uh, the knowledge and the understanding of how to act, actually run a kingdom effectively. He took possession of a kingdom that had three things really against them. A national debt, a people that was broken spiritually, and then a kingdom that was going to be lost to their enemy in which they would become permanent slaves. But the three major things that Hezekiah had in his favor was that the fact that he had a good mother. He had a godly mother. And because of his mother, we can see the fact that there were some things that took place in his life that reflected and had been a reflection of his mother because his mother must have been a prayer warrior. She probably didn't just pray once a month. She probably didn't, they didn't probably have daughters of Zion back then. But she was a prayer warrior. She found her place play, praying for her children, praying and interceding for her country. We see the second thing that Hezekiah had going for him, Sister Rachel. He had a preacher in his life. He had a prophet that he could go to, someone that he wasn't afraid to take instruction. <coughs> Words of encouragement. People today, if they don't have a preacher in their life, they're wandering aimlessly, just going here and there, and hopefully that things are going to work out. But see, when Hezekiah had his back to the wall, I, and when I get, and I have my back to the wall, I thank God that I have a preacher in my life. Each one of you need a preacher in your life. And the second and the third thing that Hezekiah had going for him, he was also a man of prayer. The first, there's two things that were recorded here for Hezekiah that was a very bad situation that he had to come in contact with. And there was a first was the Assyrian kings king that was busy subduing other nation. The Syrian king was busy taking claim to these nations. And in the midst of this, he gets the letter from the Egyptian king who says, we're coming after you. We're going to get you. We're going to take your kids. You're going to become our property. Don't think for one minute 
that we're not going to get you. Because these other nations, they thought the same thing. And they trusted their God. But guess what? When we went in there, we took their gods and we cast them into a pit. We subdued their kingdoms. And we're going to do the same with you and with your God. We're just going to wrap them all up and we're going to take the gold and we're going to take the silver. We're going to take everything and claim it for our God. Our God is the great God. He's then the letter possibly was written says none of their gods save them and yours won't save you. But we see this morning that Hezekiah's response to this whole story was that he went to the temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to take our problems. We need to take our situations and we need to take them to the temple. Yes. And lay it out before the Lord. Great 
this morning if we all had a red button and a red phone. Because when the devil comes around, Sister Rachel, we'd hit the red button and blow him up. And if he still was bothering us, Sister Louise, we'd pick up the red phone and we call and give the Lord a shot. But our red button, our red phone is our prayer line. And if we don't have a prayer line, we don't have a red button. Right. We don't have a source to the throne. Right. And people that don't have a source, they're always hoping, wishing something would happen. Oh, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. Well, maybe for them. Eventually it does get better. But I'm so thankful for the child of God who prays, who prays, and who has a, a minister, a preacher, a prophet in their life. Someone who's praying for them. And that's why I feel so burdened, so passionate this morning that we need to take this week and really pray and fast for one another. For this church for this ministry, for our communities. And the power of prayer is going to move the forces of evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hezekiah believed God was aware. God was involved. God was powerful. And that God would respond to his faith. And guess what? God did. defeated 185,000 of them were dead when God moves our problem dies it doesn't mean well we won't have another problem because we will always have problems but I'm so glad to know that when we pray sister Rachel God will move an amazing thing about it when Hezekiah was 25 years of age and took the throne. It was, a, it was 14 years before he really had his major first big battle struggle. See, sometimes we, we can serve God for a long time and, and not just maybe have a few ripples, a little bit of ups and downs, nothing really major, and all of a sudden one day, we're, we're hit with a big bomb. We're hit with a big problem. But through the course of Hezekiah's life, he didn't wait for the big problem to drop to pray. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. And yet, when the big problem came, guess what? He wasn't afraid to remind God. You know, there are times we take our problems and take them to the temple, spread them before the altar, and say, God, this is what they're saying about you. But let's, but Lord, I want to remind you. Yes. Yes. When the money gets low in the check account, and there's more zeros than there are numbers, and the zeros are on, on, the, wrong, on the wrong side of the digits, there's not a one with the six or seven zeros, but it can be six or seven zeros and a one. Yes. Yes. But when the problem becomes a problem, Hezekiah said, Lord, let me remind you, I've been a faithful servant. Lord, I want to remind you of how good you've been to me. Lord, I want to remind you. And Hezekiah in his prayer reminded God how faithful he was in his service. You can't be faithful to God if you're a hit and miss tithe payer. You can't be faithful to God if you're just a hit and miss church attender. You can't be faithful to God if you're just a hit and miss witnesser. If you only... Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will testify, I witness. No, it's not that when we're moved upon to do something. But when we say we are faithful, 
And, and I realize there are some situations that cause us certain things to happen. But if we are faithful in our service, prayer service, daily closet service, if we're faithful in our living for God, we come before him and say, I just want to remind you, Lord, for 35 long years, I've been faithful. I have supported my church. I have backed my pastor, and I, and I stood with him when I, I didn't feel like he was always right. But I backed him. Amen. I prayed for his family. Amen. And he's been there for my family. I don't want you to remember a few things about my church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you know what? When we get his attention, things happen. Right. Hallelujah. And yet, we see the first thing we learn from Hezekiah is that if we pray, the Lord will fight our battles. The most reassuring word in this story is the words God addressed to Hezekiah. Because you have prayed to me. Hezekiah didn't go look for some stone or piece of wood to bow down to and say, Paul, oh, you got to hear me. No, but Hezekiah cried out to God and prayed to God. And God says, because you have prayed to me. So this clearly points one thing, saints. If Hezekiah had not prayed, God would not have intervened. So if we better take a good lesson and a good look into the book when it comes about, well, let's see if it all will work out and we sit back and twiddle our thumbs. Well, I think if we do some deep, deep uh, breathing techniques, it'll go away. If we close our eyes long enough, and I open my eyes, maybe y'all disappear. <laughs> no. But God assured Hezekiah because you prayed. What assurance we have today that when God hears us because we pray, he will move. When we call upon him, he will answer. The second situation Hezekiah found himself in is when he was sick and he was at the point of death. Guess what? It was a preacher who came into his room and said, Hezekiah, he found Hezekiah with his face to the wall and he began to pray again and cry out and say, God, remember your servant. Just remember how faithful I was. And we're talking about in the hour of death. We don't know what he was dying of. Just like of the old days, people, everybody died of consumption. And what was that? It could have been heart failure. It could have been liver problems. It could have been just... And so they really didn't know what it was, so everybody just died of consumption. So he probably had consumption. We know that he, his hour of death was quickly approaching. But once again, upon his deathbed, he begins to pray and cry out to God, Remember how faithful of a servant I've been to you. And look at how I've turned this country around that was so degraded because of my father. Lord, you have prosperous us. And then the prophet comes in. He begged God, remember how I lived my life. And when the prophets came in, he said, God has once again heard your prayer. And we see that God turned back the hands of the clock and gave Hezekiah 15 more years. See, there is nothing wrong with saying 
God, I am coming to you and I need your help. I have been faithful to you for many years and I need for you to be faithful to me right now. Saints, you talk about words of encouragement is when you can encourage yourself as David did in the Lord and remind God about a few things. Lord, I've been a faithful servant. Now I need you to be faithful to me. And then we hold on to the promise because we do know that our prayers are not ignored nor do they fall upon deaf ears. Mm. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Don't bury your hands in your, or your head in your hands and sob. If you're, if you're going, if you have a sob, let the tears flow, but look up. Your redemption is up. Your help is up. Your help comes from the Lord. Look up. Oh Lord, in the morning, will I direct my voice unto thee will I look up. Let's all stand. your power, great is your strength, great are you Lord and greatly to be praised, great are your ways.